This podcast is brought to you by eRadio. For more podcasts, check out our website on eradiosa.com or download the eRadio SA app from the Google Play Store. Enjoy. It is time again for uh, Tech Plus here on uh, your favorite station and uh, with myself, Jorn Engelbracht, and also uh, Kane, who uh, joins us as uh, per usual, talking about uh, all the biggest tech, not only in South Africa, but uh, in the world for the past seven days since we last spoke. Kane, hello. What, what did we miss? Speaking of the world, South Africa, which is positioned swiftly on the world, actually got hit by a solar magnetic storm and then did you see the photos of the sky took the other night yeah to die for not here in our area i think the closest was in cape town but yeah but it was amazing eh? it's, and in australia they took some amazing photos the coolest stuff unreal. always happens out of my sight oh, man. you know normally yeah. when i go outside it's just normal stars imagine that day you go outside and you just check all this auras and yeah i'd be like wow so South Africa experienced a G4 severe geomagnetic storm on Friday morning and this comes after it warned that an Earth-directed coronal mass ejection or CME was expected to impact the planet on Thursday 10 October 2024. Sansa said the source of the CME was a 1.8x solar flare that occurred on the 9th of October. I felt the heat, you know. It's actually yeah. a lot a lot this week we felt some serious mm, temperatures. Mm. Eh? Yeah, it was something different. Eh? Definitely not a normal. And it was like a humid, burgy, windy yeah. kind of heat. Yeah. It but actually felt a lot like what it felt. That's kind of like the weather in Dubai. It's very much like mm, that. That's Just not my kind of weather. You get used to it, actually. It's actually not that bad. It's nice like having hot, warm... You know what it is, actually? It's very interesting because, it, well, at least when I was in Dubai, I found that all the time you're in these air-conditioned places and stuff, you actually get cold. It's like 15 to 20 degrees Celsius inside. <laughs> no, yeah. I'd still prefer and, that. <laughs> and if you sleep with your window open, it's a, it's a cash 35. <laughs> so when you're chilling at 15, you're chilly, you know? Yeah, no, I'd rather do the 15, please. And Thank I was you. staying with a, f- uh, a friend of mine from Armenia, and he is used to highly colder climates. So he was pumping the air conditioning to the max. I said, freezing cold. <laughs> <laughs> In the middle of Dubai, cold. <laughs> Didn't make sense. So... A solar flare happens, you know, it caused, it can be various causes from it, but what actually happens is it's like a, a, the sun ejects a huge amount of mass. Yeah. And that mass creates an energy wave, and that energy wave just tumbles towards us. And sometimes it hits us. And when it does, our geomagnetic um, field actually protects us. And this is what I, I, I don't know why I find this so interesting, but it is something very it cool, is, I think, it that. Is. You, you have something like the sun eject this massive amount of, you know, solar magnetic radiation, geomagnetic um, energy. And the thing that protects us from it isn't because our atmosphere is so dense that it cushions the impact of this radiation. It's because at our core, you know, at the Earth's core, we have nickel and, and various metals that mix together and from this mixing create like a magnetic charge. And this is called the geomagnetic field that we have. Mm. And that... That radiation, that geomagnetic storm is partially blocked, mostly blocked by a magnetic field. Mm. You know? And normally when you have a magnetic field, if you, you know, if you have two magnets and they're positive and negative are close together and you bring them closer together, when those magnets come together, that's when their magnetic fields are yeah. close together. So that's kind of what, uh, what a geomagnetic storm is. Oh, that sounds nutshell. very, very interesting. Hey, listen, this week we didn't have any feedback from um, Starsat, hey? Nothing. No. Dead a- silence. Absolutely nothing. Wow, that's yeah. incredible. No news at all from Starsat. Do you think Starset. they're gone? They just say to the people uh, they're looking at uh, refunds, you know, because people paid in advance. W- would you be asking for a refund? 
Well, yes, if I paid three grand. Who are you going to ask? Are you going to ask South Africa? Or are you going to ask Starset? <laughs> I don't know Starset. <laughs> Starset, yeah. Why would you ask thank, them and not Starset? That was a lovely lady bringing us cool drink. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> she um, knows we talk a lot when we do this show. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, Starset. so people asking for for you know their um, uh, money back. Because they've been now uh, without, what's it, two weeks without television, not, no access at all to, to the channels. And Starsat, I think they kind of accepted defeat or, or maybe there's something going on in the background that we don't know about. Just for those who don't know, uh, Starsat was closed, uh, what was it, a week ago, two yeah, weeks ago? Yeah, was stormed. More yeah, so. by ICASA, the uh, regulator of uh, communication in South Africa, and they just uh, store all their equipment. No, well, not stole it. <laughs> Might as well be stole. They just came there, ripped it up, and left. <laughs> yeah, and they damaged it apparently as well. So uh, those things are worth so much. And now, uh, you know, they're trying to get a, an actual license to carry on. But I just don't know. Somehow, I just don't see it happening anymore because they've now they've now been <laughs> running illegally for a year. South Africa said pay, they said no ways. South Africa shut them down, they said no ways. And now they're like, can we have our license back? They're like, no ways, you know. Yeah. No surprise you there. Know, you know what really gets to me? On social media, they still sort of paint the picture that there's nothing wrong, like... Uh, Business as usual. Like, there's no license problem. It, they make it sound like there's just a, a problem with the, the feed and they will restore uh, the service as soon as possible. <laughs> they're not going into... I wonder who said that to them. They're not going into details. Damage control. Yeah. Definitely. They're not going into details and saying, you know, the equipment's gone or whatever. they just like, we're aware of problems on the feed and I, stuff. I think their biggest fear right now, genuinely, is mass refund requests. Yeah. Because if they got back online tomorrow, the guy that was like, you know, this is rubbish. I'm going to cancel my account tomorrow. He's not going to cancel it. Yeah. But if that same guy doesn't come online the next day and he hears about 10, 20 people all calling to cancel their subscriptions, he's like, hell yeah, let's cancel this thing. Where do I go online? And all of a sudden, they just have a mega subscription cancellation yep. problem and that you can't get back from. Mm -mm. You can put the service back online while your subscribers are still there, but if your subscribers have left... Exactly. And you come back online. That's a big blow, eh? It's a big blow. So that makes the chances even... So they're trying to protect themselves from mass subscriber runoff, basically. But, I mean, at what I do feel a little bit bad for them because they were operating in South Africa illegally. That's what I don't feel bad for them for. But then when South mm. African police rocked up and they were like, you know, give us your equipment, they're like... You have to be very careful. They're like, we're going to take it. They're like, okay, but be careful. We're connected to the rest of Africa. Yeah. They're like, we're taking it. And it just took everything. Yeah, and then they were like, but, but can't we have a discussion? <laughs> can we just chat about this? <laughs> yeah, can we please talk about it? And they left with their equipment and uh, their international broadcasting ceased as well. They weren't yeah. able to broadcast into the rest of Africa Yeah, either. they just unplugged everything. <laughs> <laughs> Definition of don't don't leave it all up to one plug. Yeah, <laughs> like one wall socket. The whole company <laughs> is in one wall socket. <laughs> like you can unplug everything, but not that. And the guy's like, like oh no, it's over now. Oh, they just could have gone for the DB board anyway. The they would shut down board. the whole bloody place. <laughs> but uh, shame, man. You know, and then they uh, loaded all the TVs. So, so, took, so took the TVs and the. Flat screen. They, they don't want to cover the license fee. <laughs> 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 Roughly. <laughs> yeah, they, they stole everything. I, th I think they took everything in, uh, just to except the staff. They didn't take the staff. No, they left them. That's horrible. <laughs> That's a bad They day. just left them there in their little prayer circle. Shame back. That's crazy. Imagine being a staff member there. Like, you don't know to stop them or to let them go. You yeah. don't know what to do. You don't nah, know I wouldn't story. interfere. They've got guns. But um, oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, the, the big thing is, is is they obviously know they won't get paid now, you see. They won't. I mean, what? how do you pay if you don't have any money? They're unemployed now, basically. But, you know, Same. they must still have employee protection. So they, yeah. they've got a few oh, choices. True. Bankruptcy yeah. Or try and like they're. I think they're in a very difficult situation because they can go bankrupt, but then there's that's just a massive problem in of itself. 
They can try wait it out, but they got to pay every month while they wait it out. Yeah, they can try let go well. some staff, but they have to. They actually have to pay. Some staff might get paid out six months, one year. Yeah, I'm can't let. So a very tricky situation. And it's also a bad situation for the staff, you know, because Christmas is just around the corner, and uh, you know, being without income this time of year is is very very scary. In fact. Especially with all the mobile callers calling you to try and sell you stuff. How are you going to buy all the <laughs> Christmas gifts that all the banks offer you? Like insurance. Man, cold calling is not bad, eh? I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I get cold calls now. It's not even a human being anymore. They don't even have the decency yeah. to send the person. <laughs> to send the robot. <laughs> the hello, did I? he doesn't care. <laughs> yeah. Because we hurt the feelings of the human callers. So they just gave it to the robot. <laughs> he was like, the one job I'll actually give up. <laughs> but I get I literally it's, I like answer my phone it's like this is an important consumer and I just ended I'm like wow yeah same yeah but apparently there is a uh, the South African information regulator will soon take decisive action against direct marketers contravening the protection of personal information act or POPIA mm. um, the information reg- uh, the information regulator chair Panty Tukule uh, told 702 that the watchdog is finalizing the publication of a guidance note which efficiently and effectively says telemarketing amounts to electronic communication and must hear to POPIA but I've, I'm, I'm firm I'm firm in the belief that these teleprompt marketers that are here in South Africa they absolutely 120% don't have permission to call you yeah not a chance 80% 90% Mm. of them yeah they like living dangerously you see I probably get out of 10 spam callers one of them might actually be a legitimate company that actually has my number that's actually trying to sell me something that's useful to me but the rest of them are but have you got true caller and a spam filter well, I had actually had I had TrueCaller on my Samsung, and when I came uh-huh. to to iOS, I just never ended up installing it. And what a difference it makes not having that! Now you got to get it back, man. You just feel blind. Yeah, mine is so strict; I can't even have family members calling me. <laughs> they don't even get through. Sometimes <laughs> I feel so bad saying this, but sometimes like some kind of someone will come to vendor service to me <laughs> like maybe an uber's coming to pick me up and they'll call me and uh-huh. they'll like say their name but they'll have their previous job like handyman steve oh. you know, like, <laughs> i know what you did before uber <laughs> it's like, yeah it's so funny those custom names hey so people can custom name you you yeah. don't want to be known as that that rude guy from leisure island you know yeah. <laughs> like, on true caller can you imagine listen yeah my <laughs> phone was once ringing and it it, it, it it literally on true caller somebody named it the P word. <laughs> and I was like, oh my word, should I, I answer it? or what? <laughs> what could he want from me? Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> that is insane. No, man, that is crazy. So apparently the uh, the organization held a meeting to engage with players in the sector where most argue that telephonic direct marketing doesn't constitute electronic communication. They argue that telephonic messages are transmitted immediately and are not stored in the network or the device of the recipient until it's received we did research and we were assisted by it experts we came to the conclusion that as far as the regulator is concerned a telephonic call is an electronic communication it's so like i mean the argument here the argument here is to say that that a phone call is not electronic communication you are literally yeah. communicating via an electronic device. Exactly. You can't quite you can't go around that so many ways. There's only one definition. Uh, you're definitely not communicating via wood. You know, it's it's definitely an, an electronic nature. <laughs> and it is definitely of a communication nature. So we'll see what happens, but I've heard this before. I mean I've even been the guy who said, you know, where did you get my number from? And yeah, that's there, usually the first question. And then, you know, Bar bar black sheep comes out and they don't know what to say, you know, and they just kind of make up an excuse, I guess. But I've never really seen someone get in trouble for you know, this company has been penalized for making too many te- electronic phone calls. I don't think I've ever really seen any uh, punishment for yeah, not circumventing really. it. But nonetheless, apparently some crackdowns are happening. And uh, when was the last time you, you are MTN, aren't you? Yes. When was the last time they like marketed a big deal to you and? Ooh, there was actually recently some kind of upgrade call or something. I didn't take the call. Oh, really? Yeah, they're trying to give, say, sell me a new contract or something. I think it's that time again. And do you think, sure. what, how, how would you say? No, you I think it, next, oh, yo, how time flies. It is actually time for a new one, November. An upgrade, eh? Yeah, mm. that's another two years. Would you stay phone. with MTN? 
Yeah, I'm quite happy actually. Okay. Yeah, and you are you? What are you on? I'm on Vodacom. I mean, I'm on Vodacom and Telcom. Are you both? I have yeah. Def, uh, we use different uh, operators for different things sometimes, and sometimes oh. the Alt is actually pretty good with Vodacom. I think the 5G network with Vodacom is probably one of the best mobile network related tariffs here in the area. I wouldn't say it's the most coverage, but like you could literally put the Bluetooth on on your phone and have better coverage than Telcom. <laughs> 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 so apparently MTN is on the rebound after getting things under control in its Nigeria operation with dividends and earnings expected to grow in the near future. This is according to Centico Capital's um, speaker on Business Day TV. If you look at MTN, it's all about unlocking some value in the Nigerian operation. This follows the MTN group reporting a 20.8% decline in service revenue and a 7.39 billion rand loss in half year results jeez man 7 billion rand is a that's a lot of money that's a lot of money yeah because yeah. that's the problem when you become such a big company if you slide 10% you're talking billions eh exactly and I mean if, if you lose 7 billion in half a year if you can just think about how much food and, and, and mm. wellness that is for people that's an insane amount of money so Mm-mm. this was attributed to its macroeconomic factors, including the further devaluation of the Nigerian Naira and operational challenges to Sudan due to the ongoing conflict. Poor Nigeria. You know, every single business that's mm. flipping sucking just blames their currency. I mean, <laughs> multi-choice goes down, DSTV's in trouble. They're like, the Naira. You yeah. know? <laughs> <laughs> MTN's like, ah, oh, the Naira. Every time it's the Naira. You know, like you'd think Nigeria is such a big role in Africa. Yeah, oh, shit. It's quite funny. It's like not the first time I've read it about it but uh, I think it's quite sticky because you know in your earnings report you got to like, got to have some reasoning for your investors and I guess the Naira falling yeah. has worked for 20 years um, especially with the you know remember back in the day when you could get uh, like 20 billion um, Nigerian dollars for your bread and stuff right when it was a mega mega mm. inflation I mean that kind of set that who couldn't use that as an excuse yeah it's like we have 3 point billion, 5 billion from Nigeria, but it only roughly translates to about 20 rand. Mm. Um, so apparently also another another item is uh, Checker 60 and 60 has got some uh, some upgrades coming. How are you feeling about your Checker 60, 60 service here in the area? No, I love it. I love it. it I works. love it. Um, they must just be careful. I've got instruction in the area at the moment. I don't want them driving into a hole or something. <laughs> 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 but listen, he, yeah, I'm very happy with their service. Um, they're that. always on time. It's it's amazing. Imagine that you get a message like your your delivery driver's been missing for six hours, but it should be fine. He's going to be well fed. <laughs> you can see what he was bringing you. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Hey, but their app had a massive overhaul, really? a massive yeah. makeover. I've seen that. I woke up and I saw. I just woke up and it auto updated, and I saw the checkers icon little icon on on your phone the home screen and there was a little tag that said new mm. and i was like oh and then i opened it and uh the app looks completely different did you, did you go did you see yes and apparently that app update also comes with ten thousand new checkers hyper products i actually saw new stuff on there i was wondering so you actually seeing what they started batering it's it's um, beautiful i love it love it eh? it's really streamlined to it makes it yeah, no, it's much better still. Really, eh? Yeah, yeah. So the new app allows users in the area to shop for products like camping and outdoor gear, mm-hmm. small appliances, baby products, toys, kitchens, and home electronics. A my broadband reader in Johannesburg noticed that the Checkers 6060 app on their Android device had been updated. Yeah. They can now buy Checkers Hyper products and access the app's new features. It hasn't made its way to iOS yet. So, oh, you don't have it yet. I don't have the app. I've only seen it on my Samsung. Did you like, see? So you saw the, saw the layout and everything. I Did saw you see it, how indeed. different it is? I know, and I was quite pleased that it wasn't on iOS. And the opening screen is so pretty as well. And and now when you know when you used to order and then you can track the driver and all that stuff, or it shows you how they're shopping and you can see how the items are falling into the cart. Yeah, they changed that as well. It looks a bit more. You'll see. I wish I could meet the silent hero in this garden route or specifically Nasna area that has made it possible or at least the group of people that I hope work together to make it possible to be able to have so many delivery services here. Yeah. I can I can get on my phone and before I've even left my house, I can get the best products from Spa 
pick and pay and Woolworths delivered straight to my door. Yep. And compare the prices amongst each other and yeah, everything. And they arrive in the house. same day. Yep. Every product, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. You know, so. we, at one stage, we called checkers out of stock because uh, every second product on my favorite list is out of stock. <laughs> Didn't make it. Yeah, but that, I think they, they, they kind of improved on it in the meantime, which is good. It's going to be like the, the KFC ice cream machine thing. Yeah. It's like our machine's not working. The guy's yeah. got like crumbs all over his face. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't out of donuts today I'm afraid <laughs> you know, specifically the chocolate the, uh, and I have some other news as well a South African computer giant um, is uh, is apparently going to be making it big with a 20 million rand cyber security play Mustech has acquired a majority stake in security operations center as a service provider cyber antics from Suez Africa IT in a 20 million rand deal. The transaction comprises a transfer of 8 million rand in shares and 12 million shareholder loan for 70% of cyber antics. Multinational IT service provider Nil Data Africa will continue to hold the remaining 30% interest in cyber antics. AO Technologies first announced the transaction in a notice published on the JSC news service after the market closed on Wednesday. So there you go, some cybersecurity companies getting funded or bought out, should I say, acquired here in South Africa. And also in other news as well, we have SAVC, which has apparently started selling land to raise money. Oh my lord, is truly to the day of our lives. actually get you this. <laughs> literally like an episode of Bold and the Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shame, the man. South African Broadcasting Corporation SABC through Brawl Auctions and Sales will auction off three pieces of land in Durban Central to raise funds. The auction will take place on the 16th of October 2024. The public broadcaster's financial situation is dire with the Portfolio Committee on Communications and Digital Technologies calling for change to the SABC's funding model as well as a greater support from tax mm. player funds. Man, ah, it's always shit. the same with SABC. I kind of feel bad, you know. Like I wish they were, they, I wish their revenue model didn't revolve around getting people to pay their TV licenses badly. Yeah, like that's just the worst. Not working. It's not the good model. It just does kill they it. Really, should just scrap it. I don't know why it's still there. That must. Just it kill isn't it. working. They must make it a derivative of some other me- like up up value added tax or something like that. I don't know. Figure but something out, but. Before we go for a music break now, wasn't there a story this week also about their signal that was going to be switched off? Yes, I heard about that as well. Their analog signals getting turned off and how they I think this is maybe why they're selling land to try and, you know, create enough capital um, to do it. But this land that they're selling, the compi- combined plot size is 8,944 square meters, which is about nine pretty huge pieces of house land. You know, mm. it's, it's, it's quite a space. It's quite a space indeed. The agents say the property is surrounded by hospitals, hotels, shops and businesses and the area is also a wide variety of... Re- so they're literally dropping some of their high-level properties into the market to try and raise... That's when you... That's really bad. Yeah, that's, I think... That's didn't bad. Telcom do the same recently as well? They did. Selling properties. It did and it's not a... I mean, maybe it's not a strategic a play. Maybe that's why they hold the properties for times like this, but... Mm, really, yeah, it could be. Just because you have the reserve fund doesn't mean it's good that you're dipping into it. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's a bit concerning. What does it tell us? Yeah. Right. Let's go for some music. Let's do it. Yes, welcome back to uh, Tech Plus on uh, this uh, Saturday. It's uh, Jan and Kane with you, and uh, we are discussing the week's biggest uh, tech stories. Something really big in the news also this week, I had it in almost all my news bulletins as it uh, evolved, was Hurricane uh, Moulton. Uh, following so shortly on the heels of uh, Hurricane Helene. So they had two hurricanes back to back, basically, in uh, Florida. In I saw States. a guy on TikTok, right, who... He was like kind of going famous, probably because a lot of people were in the Florida area who were passing by what, this it, individual. Was it the boat guy? It was the boat guy? Uh-huh. And he's pretty famous, it. right? Yep. He's pretty famous, and obviously, naturally, if I was, you know, if if a mega huge like, hurricane, if there was a tornado landing on the heads <laughs> and in its place were houses flying into <laughs> the air, I think the last <laughs> thing I would do was would be seek refuge in my little dinghy yacht. He was so confident. But he went in and he said that his words exactly were, if it worked for Noah, 
make it work for me. And this guy climbed into his little boat and starved off what would probably be some of the biggest hurricanes I've seen on camera and co- that caused some of the most devastation I've ever seen. I mean, it, it rewrites tornado. It was literally Yo, like, deathly large. Yeah, but I saw comments afterwards... Um, but you know, uh, I didn't see it from an official source. But they said he's okay. Yes. They actually uh, took him in. Uh, they raised funds for him on GoFundMe or whatever. Took him in. He. Uh, they took him to safety. He was staying somewhere in a house, and uh, apparently his boat was smashed into the wall. Wow. Insane. So I don't know how true that is, but I mean, it could very well be true. So if he stayed on, I'm sure he was so confident in that boat of his. <laughs> no, you'll be fine. The th- freaking thing doesn't even have a door. <laughs> it's open on the back, but no, no, he's going to be fine. Eh? He's going to be fine. He's got his supplies. And, and he survived, literally, yeah. on a boat. Goes to show, if you when in doubt, and there's a big water-based weather f- anomaly. Yeah, he was so confident in that boat. I want to be that confident. I wonder <laughs> how safe, it must be super, I wonder how safe it is if an earthquake hits while you're in a boat. I guess it's Ooh. safe until the water has a meltdown and hits you with a tsunami. Yeah. I think you don't feel it. Maybe you feel it, but you'll definitely, yeah. the wave that comes but afterwards will probably send you. Know, you with a tsunami, you're going to go and visit people far <laughs> in, in town <laughs> on the hills. <laughs> Man, that's so funny. That's yeah, but crazy. I think so. But I mean, just generally, he's okay. Um, I don't know about his boat. It doesn't sound like the boat made it. So they uh, essentially so- saved his life thanks to social media and. and and stuff and the world where you can become famous being the silly guy that stayed in your boat during a hurricane and survived yeah but they were idiotic people out there man yeah. in underwear standing there with the American flag draped around them standing there with their arms open and screaming at the storm take me take wasn't me. there over 100 death toll it was like pretty significant yeah it's still climbing but it's, I hope it's probably those stupid people yeah well you're not gonna they'll get no brownie points if you're gonna go do that stuff no if you put your arms up and say take Take me, take me, and you're dead. I'm, I have no sympathy. I saw a person who said they were going to stay. They were on TikTok. They said they were going to stay in their house. And then they had another video where they were like, they were still in their house. And the water was in their house. The only difference is they were on the second floor. <laughs> <laughs> and the water was in the room. So, whole bottom floor underwater. That's sure. crazy. Yeah, yeah but uh, some of those Americans are crazy. Eh? Apparently, that even... Um, Apparently, Hurricane Milton also knocked out power for millions of people. Yeah. Power outages affected more than 3.3 million customers in Florida. That's rookie numbers. South Africa was at like 60 million people <laughs> affected by power outages for two years. More, 14 years. <laughs> if you if you aggregate it all. Out of the 11.5 million customers tracked by PowerOutage.us, which collects data from utilities, Milton made landfall as an extremely dangerous Category 3 hurricane. Wow. So uh, that's insane, eh? 11.5 million people, 3.3 million people didn't have power. Yeah, but listen, I'm so glad you're mentioning power now. What's Do you know what today means? Power. Today marks the day 200 of no load shedding in South Africa. Wow, shall we, shall we yeah, we give it a, clap give it a, for that. Give it a, Even if it was all <laughs> fake to begin with, I still would celebrate. <laughs> Yeah, 200 days of keeping the lights on, eh? And I must say, I didn't even have a, a local power interruption in the meantime. No. My, mine's been on solidly now for 200 days. I just I just find it strange how overnight they solved that problem. So quickly, eh? So quickly. You didn't even lift so a convenient. spanner. Yeah, so convenient. Even if you did lift a spanner, you couldn't lift enough spanners in 24 hours to fix the problem. And they're still arresting people. This week, they had another guy who was caught with uh, copper... But years ago, but he's only been prosecuted now. Really? So they're clamping down on the... I think they're really clamping down on the sabotage, and that seems to be uh, making a big difference. But also all the new renewable energy that came online is really helping ESCOM. Yeah. Because uh, actually, there's this lady, there's a young lady, she's uh, uh, responsible for keeping the grid steady. Okay. So she's got... um, I don't know why I'm stuttering all of a sudden. She's got like a grid... Like a, a screen in her house, and everywhere she goes, she's got screens to check, you know, like graphs. Is everything <laughs> still okay? And is is demand, like, I don't know, she sleeps with a monitor next to her bed as well. Like, is demand and supply all right, you know? Anyway, so she um, said that um, they're finding during the day that uh, the solar, you know, we had that solar 
buzz where everybody yes. just every second house got solar panels and uh, that's helping during the day that's carrying the grid during the day and um, those because those people are running off that and using nice, that man. and that leaves more electricity for us without the solar panels yes um at night to use but they say there's a big dip because at night there's a drop because of all the solar not getting uh, energy anymore from the sun and everything charging back and up. then there's a bit of a a, a bit of a, a, a more pressure on the grid at night but uh, they balance it out it's her job to make sure that it's balanced out and there's no um demand exceeding supply and all that kind of stuff well i have quite I'm, an interesting job doing, for a la- young lady eh? they're doing their job well as well yeah she's doing a great job eh? that's a she's probably got an stressful. app on her phone as well with the graph next to her you know just waking up oh no demand <laughs> exceeding supply <laughs> <laughs> she's probably growing a, 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 a growth out of her right neck of stress <laughs> yeah, that material is, itself it's materializing <laughs> itself as a human being growing out of, out of her it's head. a huge responsibility hey i would be stressing for one lady I would live s- stress eat repeat. How do you sleep and not You don't. You're in a constant state of alertness. She said uh, in her contract, her employment contract, she needs to be on standby 24/7 365. So I don't think she really sleeps, eh? No. <laughs> not a good <laughs> No. Someone man. might want to warn her. <laughs> she's still very young, so hopefully <laughs> that's what they she like, survive. She got this good loss at least five years, yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. I hope uh, I hope we can continue it like this. I hope Yeah, same. Cha- cha- make a positive change and I hope there's not something untoward going on under the under the radar that we don't know about. Yeah, if we don't come back to the show next week and we disappear it's because we spoke the truth <laughs> and we've been executed. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it yeah. You heard it here. Now, it's just something very interesting, okay? Right? This for me is crazy. Did you see how hardcore Elon Musk is promoting Trump? Dude, he literally jumped onto the stage with him. Dude, you know they they had an interview. And it was so cringy. They had an interview with him um uh, and they were like, you know, what do you think's going to happen if uh, If Trump doesn't win, he's like, "No, nah, I'm screwed." <laughs> like, I'm totally wrecked. Yeah, I have no chance. He's like, "I'm very public about what I want." <laughs> But why? Why is Trump so? Uh, why is Elon so? Um, you know. Well, I th- I think e- Elon says he's very public about it that he believes Kamala Harris um, is just a puppet. She feel that he says that he feels that she is just the voice of behind the teleprompter she's going to say whatever a teleprompter says so based on what is that very thin reasoning he's uh you know throwing a huge amount of support uh trump's direction that that but we got to remember who we're dealing with here right this is trump so he's not going to keep it like or relax he's not going to like entertain both sides of the partnership so he just this is this is you know his biggest partner by far is Elon Musk right now there's no doubt Trump's biggest supporter right now is Elon Musk and just a few hours ago okay Trump's on you know, on doing whatever he's doing doing the hustle grinding the grind he's busy in a chat and he says in a speech in Detroit former president Donald Trump seemed to suggest that he would stop from operating um if you he, he would uh, stop self-driving cars from operating <gasps> if uh, he got elected so he was basically <sighs> saying quote this is in quotations do you like autonomous question mark does anybody like autonomous vehicles know what that is right question mark when you see a car driving along some people do i don't know a little concerning to me but the autonomous vehicles were going to stop from operating he said oh, that oh no and i was like what okay, so ne- going to say next week no more buddy buddy <laughs> Next week he's gonna go out on stage with Kamala Harris. <laughs> he's gonna be back. He go out. Just gonna like ch- it. I was like, but because people were saying, why is he so you know like brown nosing Trump at the moment? And then um, someone actually said online, and that could be true, is because tr- uh, Elon wants uh, what he called tax exemptions on these businesses in the states, and Trump's gonna give that to him, and that's what he wants because it means more money for him and his his people. Could be, maybe it's one of his motives, but what else? Yeah, Yo, you know, because it's, it's not like Elon needs any more fame. No, but have being friends with the president and being a guy who's doing a lot of things that don't necessarily use the traditional channels. Like, where would yeah. you start if you wanted to send someone into space? Yeah. Where would you start if you wanted to put a satellite into orbit? 
Where would you start make, if you had to make go friends, to Mars? Make Where friends would you Trump? start if yeah. you had to put a piece of electronics into someone's brain? This is his like five businesses he's currently running. Like, <laughs> what would you do if you were going to start a free speech platform? You know, like everything aligns with being friends with the president. But the funniest thing is, uh, uh, you know, in the past, um, Musk actually uh, bashed Trump for a few things. Eh? Yeah, he wasn't a fan, and now they all of a sudden. All those things are forgotten. Now they're big chomies. It just makes me think of the word quit pro quo. You know? Yeah. Like now very suspicious, eh? And uh, he actually, when Trump returned recently to uh, Pennsylvania, Butler, uh, where he was almost assassinated with that bullet that went past his ear, uh, that's where Trump, ach, uh, where Musk jumped onto the stage and joined him for really? a little dance. And uh, that was see if he could dodge a bullet as well. Very, very cringe. <laughs> <laughs> Very Did cringe. you watch it? I didn't watch just it. Just a piece, and I was like, Elon, just get off. <laughs> get out of town. Get out of here. <laughs> that is crazy. Apparently, AMD, now we've spoken about NVIDIA a lot. Everybody who doesn't know what NVIDIA is, NVIDIA makes graphics cards and the things that help people play computer games, but it also builds the things that helps people run cryptocurrencies, and it also builds the things that helps people um, use AI. Right and and leverage AI and and uh, helps big companies run businesses that utilize AI and they give that processing power. So apparently AMD, which is Nvidia's biggest competitor, they literally have the monopoly of the year. Um, they they make more money than you can even ever imagine. Uh, AMD's AI chips are coming apparently. AMD says the M1325 X shipping is set for Q4 and will potentially beat Nvidia's H200. A- Nvidia's H200 GPU is basically the best GPU that Nvidia has for AI related workloads. And uh, Nvidia seems a step ahead. It'll ship several billion dollars of its next gen Blackwell 8200 GPU in Q4 too. AMD says its Blackwell competitor, the M1355X, won't arrive till 2H2025. So we still have these two contenders fighting it out for some market share, but Nvidia really much still having quite the the leg up on on AMD in in regards to the um, to the generative side of things. And uh, this is what I, just before we go for the music break, this is very, very interesting to me, right? Now, we've evolved a lot in digital, you know, in our digital behavior, especially when it comes to employment, right? Now, most of the time, you know, you would go to an interview, probably that would be your first step. Maybe you'd do like a written application to a job back in the day, and then you'd get maybe a letter to say, come for an interview, and then you'd go for an interview. Nowadays, most of the interviews are probably just online. Mm -hmm. In fact... Most CV reviews are done online. It's not like you take your CV to a job, they quickly look through it and ask you questions about it. It's done online, and if it looks good enough, then you're asked to come in. So people have become pretty bored or over reading these CVs, right? So naturally, AI comes along, and they realize, hey, we can let AI read the CVs and just pop out the ones that they think is the best. And the people who write the CVs think, well, you know what, actually... Instead of writing a CV, I'll just get AI to write my CV. So now you've got AI writing CVs and AI reviewing CVs and humans getting hired. What an interesting conundrum. Yes. What an interesting conundrum. <laughs> the AI writes the CV, the AI reviews the AI CV, and you, the human, get hired. Yeah. Welcome to your future job, sir. Oh, lovely. This is your AI, Fred. You'll do all your work for you. you just got to sit here and be quiet. Yes. <laughs> it's like, like, what's going to happen? What a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. It kind of makes me nervous. I don't want to write a CV now. If robot's just going to read it. Yeah. I need to, like, Get a, a robot that's like very persuasive in its communication to other robots. Like, what is? Yeah. What are robots like? <laughs> like so now <laughs> robots are our friends. Well, right? Robots read your CVs, man. Yeah. That's crazy. And and robots write your CVs and robots read your CVs. Yeah. I mean, the stuff you can do on Chat GPT nowadays. You you uh, uh, give it a few paragraphs and ask it to summarize that text for you. It turns it into three or four sentences at the click of a button. AI is somewhat, That's so, AI so is nice. AI actually something that is so powerful. It should be illegal, but it will never be illegal, and the world will never be the same because of it. Yeah, and, uh, you know, when it summarizes something for me that would take me so long to write, I'm like, damn, this should cost money. No, I, I really think because because of AI, we have, we have embarked on what is going to be a, six, a significant change to behavioral traits of human beings in the workplace, like completely 180'd it. Because the... Let me give it to you this way. If you use the AI to talk to me, so you every time before you send me an email, you run it through the AI. 
you're going to sound like probably one of the most professional people on the planet. Right? Yeah. And, uh, and there's <coughs> no way for me to differentiate that. There's no way for me to tell, you know, like back in the day, people were actually so honed in and queued up that just by the way you speak and the, what you say, they can yeah. determine kind of how professional you are. Mm. Now that line is completely blurred. Yeah. To the point where at some point you're going to say whatever you're going to say to your phone and the AI is going to make it sound better. Mm-hmm. And it's going to change what you've said and how you've said it and the order that you've said it until it arrives at the person's ears in the perfect way to sound very professional and very convincing. But then you must sound like it as well when you get employed. Yeah. Well. So you have to use phrases like, in accordance with, <laughs> therefore, <laughs> furthermore... <laughs> <laughs> to sound very yeah, posh you start, and you start speaking like that, people are going to be like he's AI don't listen to him yeah. this guy's not real he's not real imagine using those terms and then you like what's up bro I actually watched The Circle which is a show on Netflix where people oh, I've, I've heard try of it. and be you know they try and build social influence through not seeing each other in person mm. and they had an AI come in there and ba- and the bottom line is when people people heard that there was an AI in the pretending to be a human being texting everyone wow and no, nobody picked up on it. Well, Actually, the AI was the one guy everyone was like, I trust this guy. <laughs> oh, my word. That's crazy. It's crazy. Eh? It's, it's, human conversation is such a profound thing. We use it in such a lot of, you know, kind of what, it, what are you sum you up kind of situations. Even if you just speak to someone, you can tell if you're, if you're in danger yeah. just from a conversation. You can also tell if you're about to win something, you know, like if you've gone up to someone with a, hmm. with a prank or something and they're just like, you know, they start freaking out. Something's about to happen. And uh, are we about to go to a music break? Yeah, boy. Let's do it. And we've reached the final stretch of uh, this week's edition of uh, Tech Plus. If you just joined us, you're late, but not too late. Okay? Ne- hey? Never too late. No, never show. too late. What's next on your agenda? Next up, we're taking a look at Microsoft. And uh, do you remember Microsoft actually got uh, hired by the U.S. military to build what they called HoloLenses? No. Which was supposed to be like an augmented reality pair of VR headsets that military-grade individuals could wear in battle and would give them like heads-up displays and communicate right to their peripheral and they would have like a three-dimensional space of digital information and they could look at and analyze stuff in AI and do all that sort of stuff. So the early demos, which included a simulation of walking on Mars, were far more impressive than the real HoloLens' experience when it shipped a year later. Microsoft used prototype units of the HoloLens for initial demos to the media, which tethered Google uh, goggles to a mini computer you had to wear like a lanyard around your neck. Bottom line is um, HoloLens has now handed over um, those uh, that dream to Meta to basically pursue. And Meta does have probably one of the best VR headsets on the planet at the moment. And you know what's really interesting to me is Mark Zuckerberg was actually super duper invested in the metaverse. And everyone said, go AI, go AI, you got to do AI, you got to do AI, you got to go AI. Mm. Even investors, like, what are you doing? Like, get out of the metaverse, go AI, go AI. They went AI, but, you know, I think the, the moves that they made in VR probably made one of the biggest differences for them in terms of being prepared for this augmented reality universe. It is not the VR headset that it will make Meta super successful in that space. It's all the sub devices that try and take you as far to a VR headset as possible by but without all of the negatives of a VR headset glasses that on a whole VR headset you don't have to step into like a, a motocross helmet just to mm-hmm. you know go online uh, just a pair of glasses is all you need you can speak to it some some of the most interesting like AR related devices don't have any screen. The Meta VR glasses that I have, the Meta glasses, they don't have any screen. There's no display. Everything sure. is voice controlled and button controlled. You don't need a visual. So when you strap in a visual to that as well, as well, obviously it gets really, really cool. Next up on our news as well, Porsche is going to be recalling over 27,000 electric vehicles in the US over a battery shortage circuit issue. Oh dear. So yeah, if you have a Porsche EV, which you probably don't, um, do be sure to watch out and make sure that you get it returned. But I don't even think that particular model came back. I just think about trying to manage getting 27,000 cars back to your dealership. Mm. I mean, have you ever even tried to store 500 cars in a building? I mean, it's just, there were just 27,000 cars is so many, so much volume to manage 
all the fixes of. Yeah, That's but now really also with the hurricane in, in, in America, I don't know if you saw how many houses caught fire. Caught fire? And it was uh, because of EVs in the garage. Getting wet? Really? Holy moly. And those fires, because they battled putting those fires out. Because you can't. Obviously it's we heard about the Tesla burning in the pool. Yeah. Caught on fire, driven yeah, into so the pool, burned for four And hours. also, you know, the flames, it's got a, a bit of a different color to it. Like a blue. Yeah, strange color. Blue white. So a lot of uh, houses actually burned because of EVs being damaged inside the garage. Let's say the roof collapsed on it and somehow it caught fire. Wow. Causing a lot of problems. Those EVs are a dangerous. Fire in water. Can you imagine? You're, like, <laughs> you're in your house. Yes. You, it's flooding. <laughs> it's literally <laughs> Armageddon. There's a hurricane. Your your tractor just flew away, and here your <laughs> house just tractor. catches on fire. Yeah. Like in the middle of this flood, <laughs> this rain, you're adding to the mix is now a house on fire oh, in the water. We really have all the elements. We've got wind, rain, and fire. What's next? <laughs> Guys, like on Asian insurance <laughs> policy, did it burn down? Wash away <laughs> or crumble. It's like circles all three of them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not good. Thanks, Tesla. No. Elon Musk, stop producing Teslas. So Lexus is oh, launching dear. a new LX SUV with a rugged hybrid engine that's capable of surviving, you guessed it, water. Okay. <laughs> So, <laughs> Lexus has built a new waterproofed hybrid engine. It's like they knew. Yeah. It's like they knew. They're like, we just need a flood and we drop this news immediately. <laughs> so, apparently, Lexus says its newly designed parallel hybrid system integrates a motor generator with a cluster position between the engine and transmission. The setup lets it maximize torque output and maintain full time four wheel drive, which is good for efficiency. It's also the automaker's first system that includes both an alternator and a starter that can bypass the hybrid system in case of a failure and act as a regular petrol engine. Very, very cool. I've always liked Lexuses. I wish there were more of those uh, mm. in South Africa, to be quite honest with you. I think they're really, really cool. And then finally, with the Meta thing, Meta is apparently um, looking to develop a whole array of, uh, of uh, hardware that's, that's AI-specific as well. So a peek into the development processes at Meta Labs. Uh, shows that there's potentially glasses, sneakers, a lot of a lot of wearable tech, and uh, we'll see what uh, what exactly that brings. I'm still trying to find a real use case for a wearable piece of tech that isn't a cell phone. Like I feel mm. it is hard to pinpoint a piece of wearable tech beyond a cell phone that also doesn't need a cell phone to be a piece of tech. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what that kind of proprietary. Uh, solution is to you know to to not having to have a phone but also have these wearable devices that make your life a little bit easier like what's the point of a galaxy ring if you don't have a samsung to to mm, pair with it exactly yeah. you know, then it's just a ring so how do we create this utility outside of needing to be connected to a greater ecosystem and then finally we have the um um, apparently a, a, a hu- hurricane helena remember that was the one before milton i believe yes that caused some devastation and apparently one of the north carolina quartz mines was significantly damaged by that and it's just reported it is back up and operational so i guess the worst of hurricane um helene is over but uh, not quite hurricane milton yet yeah there's still a bit of flooding after milton but they were expecting worse i don't know if you saw but at one stage one of the mayors of one of the uh, counties there said uh, on tv she said if you're not getting out you're gonna die. <laughs> she literally said that on TV. It's like, yo. That's when you know. Yeah, that's when you know, hey. And some people are, and me as well, when the nights were fires were here, I was like, it's cool, I'll just stay at home, I'll be fine. And then I saw like flames that were bigger than the trees at some house. I was like, yeah, I think it's time to go. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. I don't think it's time to stick around. Exactly. And on that note, on that fiery note, it's time to say goodbye. It is time to say goodbye. It's time to get out of town. Oh, before we go, before Hello. I forget, remember Brazil Band X? Yes. Apparently still- they've let them back in. Oh, I wonder who Elon phoned to <laughs> fix it there. Phoned a friend. 50 50 with made the audience. Friends with one of the mayors there. <laughs> Asked the audience. Man, <laughs> and he, so he's back in. That's, that's really cool. 
And finally, NVIDIA's RTX 5070 is repeatedly set to launch alongside the RTX 5090 at CES 2025. That's it for anybody looking for the new generation of NVIDIA graphics cards for your, your work or, or, or gaming setup. There is a reported release date for 2025. So if you do have any 40 series GPUs that you're uh, holding on to, do be sure to sell those before um, before the release of that f fifth gen GPU if you want to get a good deal out of it and hopefully have some cash lying around to buy a 50 series. But uh, if you're still in the 30 series range and uh, you're looking to upgrade, definitely would wait for the fifth, ser fifth gen uh, cards to come out. Take the knock, not getting as much for your third gen GPU, but still definitely getting a way better price, way, way, way better price on your 40 series GPU as soon as those 50 series is land. And I had my doubts last year when we were on the third gen and the, the fourth gen launched. I thought, nah, there's no way the, the second hand market and the, the first hand market's prices are going to drop that much. And they dropped. They dropped. So something to keep in mind if you're considering a graphics card upgrade in the next six months. And now it really is time to say goodbye. Uh, yes, the curtain's going to drop now on us. <laughs> Caden, thanks so much uh, for another great show and uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend and we'll see you again here next week, same time, same place. Thank you so much for having us and uh, thanks for everyone listening in. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. This podcast was brought to you by eRadio. For more podcasts, check out our website on eradioessay.com or through the eRadio Essay app from the Google Play Store.